Welcome to the official AFL Fantasy Podcast with the Traders. G'day with the Traders, I'm Roy, I coach Destroy and I'm here with Warney. Coach of the Wanda. And Calvin. Coach of Mighty Calvinator, boy. Oh, good to hear you up and about, Cal. Woo. And why wouldn't you be? Because today we're having a look at the Saints. Yes, and I'll yes. tell you what, there's a couple of really relevant players to kick us off. A couple of bloody, well, one very expensive guy. Well, Doggy certainly is that. And we will start with the man of steel, Jack Steele, who mm. is over a million dollars. One yes. million What a season dollars. he had. Pay it. Roy. Well, I think he can, yes. and we'll talk about why. So, after round 10, he didn't drop under triple figures, and he averaged 133 oh underpriced. in that time. He's underpriced. He's underpriced. Because <laughs> you couple in with the fact they've got the easiest draw for midfielders over the first five or six weeks. Yes. He's coming off. You're only as good as your last 10 rounds. Oh, and that's 133. where 133. Yep. Pig-like numbers, rocky numbers, they were. It is. Rocky so, did a full season of that, though, remember? That's amazing. That's it? how but you get a snout. But I'll tell you what, half, that's this guy big. showed he could do it. Didn't drop under 100. Yep. Averaged 133. Yep. Easy draw. You get two of him. Yep. Now, I'm what not... Do you, do you re, I consider... Yep. I'm considering doing this. Usually, I go... Yeah. I put a line through the top price, guys. I'm very similar. But... I am in the same... Mold really destroy it. right, and this it goes against you so to many do it, things. Dog. Have yeah. you got him yet, dog? Uh no. Okay, Roy. Listen but to this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's a chance. For so, one forty nine, one fifty seven, and one sixty two. Yeah, in that back end of the season, put a C on it. C on that, and your season yep. is bliss from the get go. Now you are treading on my toes about the scale of hardness and captains here. Yeah, so just back off a little bit. <laughs> All right. Okay. He plays Collingwood round one. Yeah, one fifty seven. Frenzy. Now, I'm not going to look into the future and predict Calvin's <laughs> captain's dog, but I reckon that's a number one right there. Oh, He's really? going to definitely be number one. And not treading on your toes. And then Frio next week where he had a or 134. Yeah. leg. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's crazy. It's a lot. You've got to have him. And that's And that's the thing that um, while we don't always like to pay top dollar for a player. Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, true. It, it's one of those ones where if he does have that hot start, he's going to stay over a meal and getting to that is going to be... Bloody difficult. If you don't start with him, you're not getting it's him. Borderline write off. Yeah, well, and that's what happens. You lose one of your Uber premiums yep. injured, and then it's a nightmare chasing your tail anyway. And that's what happened to coaches like myself last year. I couldn't get to Took or Jack Steele at <laughs> through all. bad coaching. Yeah, yeah, because they just got so. What, what, have <laughs> what have you I learned here, Warren? Stubborn. What have you learned here, Warren? Stubborn dog. Start with them. Pay up. Enjoy. With him, I think you're going to mm. have to. Now let's move on. Rowan Marshall. Yes. So much of the Rowan Marshall selection rides on Paddy Ryder. Yes. Now whether he plays rides role, on. It, I you know. Used that? I, well, I thought that was pretty good little yep. segue. I love yeah. it. Do you get it? Mm. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it didn't get the love I thought it might. But anyway, a lot of jokes don't around here, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paddy Ryder. Tell me where he's at. Is he going to play? I think that he probably is. Right, so if he plays his number one ruck and we don't get Rowan Marshall. Agree. But, but, mm. there's a lot of uh, pre-season to go. And who knows? Like He's getting older and he has yeah. had a lot of injury concerns he's, in he's the past. He's not playing 22 games. No, he's not. How many games does he play? <sighs> we only got 12 in last year. Yeah. I don't know, but it, the, all we need to worry For about if he's playing round one, we stay away from Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's an interesting draft, draft one, isn't it? So hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because he could be the third to fifth best ruck. Yeah. Hundred percent. The way so, that he goes. Without Ryder, he could be top two. Yeah. With yeah. with Ryder wow. last I know. year. Wow. And I'm not joking either. With Ryder last year he went at seventy eight. And without him he went one oh four. Okay, listen to this. In the last five rounds, he scored over hundred and sixteen. Four times yeah, in the yeah. last five rounds. Yeah. And that had a top of 139. Jeez, I wish he was still ruck forward because I'd be picking you, him Well, then the you'd board. run the gauntlet with it, wouldn't yeah. you? But I don't know. If he – I am very comfortable. If Ryder doesn't look like he's going to have a, you know, significant role this season, yep. you'd start with him as one of your two rucks. Yes, you could. Yeah. Mm. But it's risky. 
It is risky. Yeah. Anyway, so we know we've Watch got Watch for this a pre-season setback for Ryder. 100%. That's and that's horrendous. <laughs> and the thing is, if it's not a big enough setback to rule him out for the year, <laughs> you don't want to be stuck with Marshall at round eight if Ryder's back. So draft then, like, is it just one you kind of avoid because someone else will take him? He's a, he's a gold mine you. in Keeper League. You'd just be waiting yeah, yeah, for yeah. him to explode. Yep. But... Yeah, you do pick him up in draft, dog, but at the right spot. It could make or break they the season. They did pick up Tom Campbell from North Melbourne, which I assume is just depth. I reckon, because there were certainly times... They're not going to play him together, are no, they? No, and there's right. every chance, given the recent history, that Ryder and Marshall are both unavailable yeah, well, on a right, given week. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Very interesting, but I tell you what, he's a player that I've been a fan of for years. I'm a past owner, yep. and I am just waiting to launch on him. I want him in my side. Anyway... Love it. Jade Gresham, very interesting. So yes. forward mid, he's been at the Saints for six years now. Now, he'd been a bit of a non-event, really, yep. in, mm. from a fantasy perspective. But last year, started really well. So round one, 28 possessions, five marks, 95. Yeah. That's very good for him. Yep. Probably a fluke, I would have thought. But then <laughs> to back it up the next week, 29, a goal, 107. Right. Okay, Great so it was, a, it was a pretty good... Um, Backed up his fluke. He did. Yeah. So less of a fluke now yes. and more of a role change okay. thing. So those two games, if he's going to start next season in a similar role where he's getting more time um, around the ball, to be priced at 61... Mm. Yeah. That's Got the mid-forward status too. Yeah. That's the key. Well, you can hide behind that forward status. You yeah. can. So, so is that a classic option for you? It is. It is an option. Wow. It's one you need to consider and certainly keep an eye on well, it is just in the preseason. It's just a tick over 500. 100%. Good for draft. That's, a, that's what you Very call good a for draft, draft sleeper. 100%. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, but people are calling it an option in classic yeah, at this yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jade Gresham, the name. It turns me off. Like, I have a lot of you do. past fears about picking someone like that. <laughs> I go. This is the path I go down all the time. Yeah. I'm like, look at those numbers. That's a justifiable selection. Yeah. And then you get him and it's old Jade. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. Wrecks your season. <laughs> anyway, um, Hunter Clark, he's just always oh, not flirting, again. flirting with a breakout. Every year we talk about this. So bloke. he went through this stage um, last season between rounds four and eight. 95, 104, 104, 113. Oh, and yeah. And you're like, it's time. here he is. Here he is. It's Hunter Clark. It's he's on a wing. Hunter Clark season. Dashing off halfback. Yeah. Even running forward, kicking goals. But then you see the other side of Hunter. Oh, no. Finished the season with 26, 37, and 52. Whoa, threw up in my mouth. <laughs> what? That's unreal. He must have Vest broken his leg each game. I'm not sure. But, yeah, so this is the sort of things that happen with Hunter. But if you look at the way he finished, he's underpriced. <laughs> If you take them out. Yeah, I know. That's a stretch. Now, Jack Billings is an interesting one, especially Mm. in draft, because he's one that I think by round six could have forward status back, because at the moment he doesn't have it. They've talked about him playing forward on a half forward this year. I think he's even mentioned that. Oh, has he really? Okay, so there you go. He's coming off a down year. So he averaged 93 years in a row. Last year, averaged 83. No forward status. So you pick him up late-ish in yes. draft yeah. as a midfielder that you no know, one wants him clogging up a mid spot unless there's that carrot of round six, he's forward. That is a name you do want forward. Do you, do you draft players hoping for that? I don't think you Yes, I, I do. No, I don't. <laughs> how, how often does that work out for you, though? Uh, I did it one year with like a Whitfield. Mm. He might have been a straight mid or something and I got him as a defender late, someone like that. But I reckon you can do it. With those last few picks, you can gamble with something like that. Look, I think, as Red said, it's a dangerous thing, dog. Hope. So you don't just do it based on hope. You don't pluck a random and hope that they get it. Gong me. (laughs) Gong me, Red. (laughs) But with Billings, I think it is, I'm going to say, likely that he gets it. Okay. That's beyond hope. That's actually... Likely. Yeah. Now, anyway, he's someone you have to consider, especially in draft, but we're not starting with him in classic. That's where you don't hope. So, yeah, dog, yeah, yeah. in draft, the further the sl- they slip, the hope thing becomes more of a more real. a punt, like a yeah. really yeah. excitable punt. Anyway, at the end of the day, some of those last guys, you're probably flicking to free agents anyway mm. at the time, aren't you? Gosh, that's disrespectful to 
JB, Jack Billings. Yeah, but if he is a Ford, mm. he still goes over 80, yep. which is, what, an F2? Mm. Yeah. Now, Cycle6 hit me up on Twitter with a couple of wicked stats about Brad Crouch and Zach Jones. Right. Okay? So, Crouchy, we've loved Crouch before, like being all over him. Remember that year he came back from injury and we were like, Crouchy, Crouchy. Yeah. People were like, nah, too injury prone. And then and he, he went dominated. like 108. Played all the dominated. games. Dominated. Yep. It was unreal. So, let's think about that. His best is 108. Yep. Now, he's priced at um, 95, so obviously well unders. And <laughs> I was just going on about, yeah, yeah, didn't get injured. Last year, <laughs> he was down a bit, and his role changed a bit because his body was um, slightly banged up, yeah. all right? So it cost him a few CBAs, but when his CBAs were over 65%, he averaged that 108, that magic 108 okay. that we talk about from the past. So if he's flying you would think he's 10 points unders. So, yeah, a draft option only. Yeah, I wouldn't do it in You'd classic. You'd bump him up a bit then, mate. If, when you're drafting and you're at a group of mids that average 95, I'd be thinking he's the one to launch into, given that he could yep. Just, yeah, go I guess 105. The body again. thing is then the other little, the other devil on your shoulder that's talking about that. Yeah. Mm, I like it, though. Mm. I think, he, well, you could, at the 95... Yeah. You could go him a 98, 99, 100 range yes. of those players. Yeah, so I'd bump him up a little bit from those other ones. I like it. Now, Zach Jones, he's a points per minute guy, elite, yes. 1.22 to okay. be exact. Now, when he plays predominantly mid, well, no surprises there, but his input increases dramatically. But it's actually huge. When he's above 60% CBA, 112 average. Yeah. Now... Body and injuries keep him from doing that quite often as well. But if you kept your ear to the ground and they're saying, no, nah, we were unleashing him this year, full-time midfield, heavy load at CBAs, he's unders. Because Zach's well, not that, as old as he looks. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not. That, that always throws me out yeah, every year. Yeah. Some of his numbers last year, like you said Huge. there, Roy, when they CBAs. So he had a 151 and 123 before injury. Yeah. Came back in for a couple of quieter ones, but then 103, 124, 96, 85, 95 in round 23. That was the week that Ashley, the winner of Fantasy Classic last year, picked him up, which I thought was a crazy, strange decision. Did you? Did you? No, I thought it was a well, good move. She got rid of... Move of champions. Got rid of uh, Taranto. Taranto. God, that's an amazing... Anyway, hey, I'll tell you uh, what... Oh, got to risk it to get the biscuit, Roy. Yeah, you do. But no, that did seem logic, crazy. Yeah. You remember, though, that game. Yeah. He got injured he early, early, and I thought yeah. that move was, was disastrous. A Hilux losing yeah, move. Yeah, but anyway, what did he get? 95 in 95, the yeah. Yeah, so good work. Um, well done, winning the car again. I wish I could get a hat for <laughs> people winning cars around me. Now, there's been a few questions about Brad Hill, because he's under yeah. 600,000. And he's got defender status. Yeah. Now, you think about Brad Hill at his best. Yep. He's good. He's an 80-plus guy. But last year, he pumped out some extraordinarily low numbers. Listen to this for a moment. 24, 36, 46, 47, and 49. Mm. You can't even hide behind an injury thing no, when you've you done can't. it that many times. That many times. <laughs> That's <not> like <laughs> consistently crap. Yeah. But to average about 70... On the flip side, he's pumped out some nice scores as well. Now, he gets tagged from time to time. Yep. That obviously makes it tough on him. Um, I can't see him being that bad again. But as a defender in draft, that's a nice name to have there. It Brad is. Hill, because you know he can actually produce. Yep. With a 71 next to his name. Yeah. Is he better than that? Yes, well, he is. He is. At least he's played all the games the last couple of years as well. Like That's a, yeah. a big plus. Yeah, I mean, because you'd be happy. He's just an knowing he plus. plays all games, he's only produced 24 for you yeah. in that given week. But yeah. Oh, good. No, you're not happy with that. Um, anyone else you boys had a look at there that you want to uh, pick my saint of brain? I don't know if there's uh, any kids really, are there? Like it's, no. they're, in that, they're in that little position where you probably think they've got a fairly consolidated or a list that's played. Yeah. yeah. And that's why they're all more expensive kind of thing, I suppose. Yeah. Wanganine um, Malira, defender mid-270. He Defender is one, status is obviously yeah, handy there. He's one that might get games. He, they actually brought him to the yep. team because he does provide a bit of run and things like that. So, obviously, we know Hill provides amazing run for him, but he also can be shut out of games. I think that's um, why they've drafted him at pick 11 yep. to 
have another um, person able to run like he does. Now, what about his numbers aren't Cal? huge. He averaged 16 touches and four marks for 64, and that was um, that was in the reserves. Okay, Cal, you pulled out my highlighter and highlighted Dan Hanbury. Yes. Why? Okay, it, I'm not no, touching I, that. It's a definite do not even draft. He's averaged a couple of times over 100. Yeah, and they were big tons too back in the day. God. No, there's something Price wrong with him 54. at the moment. Yeah. Cow, Cow had... I did not... Why did you highlight that? I didn't highlight it, Roy. Cow had jet black hair when last time <laughs> had a <laughs> Average <laughs> uh, Thanks for tuning in. You can catch all our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And keep clicking back to afl.com.au and the AFL Live app for more fantasy content this preseason. <laughs>